Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 13. There is a sore evil. Ouch. What a way to sore evil. I mean, you get a sore, okay, that's bad enough, but then add evil to it. Sore evil. That I have seen under the sun, again, looking at the earthly, namely, okay, here it is. I'm going to name it. Riches kept for the owners thereof to their hurt. But those riches, verse 13, perished by evil travail, great pain. And he begat us a son, and there is nothing in his hand. Now, I don't want you to get mad at me. When I went to college, in my class in Ecclesiastes, great instructor, Greg Eastep, he gave us a chart of all the philosophies and all the isms that go with the book of Ecclesiastes. In chapter 5, verse 9, we have socialism and communism. Uh, chapter 4, verse 1, we have fascism. I didn't say a lot of them because I don't know what, somehow even how to pronounce some of these. Chapter 3, verse 18, naturalism, evolution. Look at some of the ones I can pronounce. Uh, chapter 3, verse 11, agnostic. And the one we have for verse, not, uh, verse 13, capitalism. The God of America. Presidency and capitalism. I didn't say that. That was the list that was given to me. Here's a man that's got riches. He obtained riches. And to me, my personal opinion, a lot of the capitalist systems where they gain their riches... Is that the pain and misery and woes of their employees? I have been in a convenience store where I've seen three cash registers and I've seen one employee working all three cash registers. That's your capitalistic system. And that employee only gets one pay for one employee working three registers. There'll be judgment coming. Let me step out of that. That, that didn't cost you nothing. So the sore evil is a man has gained money. Namely, riches kept for the other owners thereof to their heart. And then the riches perish, they go bye-bye. By great evil pain. Travailed like in the Bible, tribulation and a woman giving birth. And then when he has a son to give his inheritance, the money's gone. The inheritance is gone. And the son's left with nothing. Friend, that's what's happened in America in 2020. It's going to happen in 2021 and 2022 until the Antichrist comes. People are going to lose their homes. They're losing their apartments. They're losing everything. Because they... The nations and the people and the leaders and the population, the world in general, won't turn to Jesus Christ. And then the, 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 the Antichrist is going to come in and he's going to have the relief. He's going to have the programs. He's going to have, get your house back, get some food, just receive my mark. Verse 15, a true statement. I wonder if people... Don't realize when they quote this, it comes out of the Bible. As he came forth of his mother's womb, naked, shall he return to go as he came, death. And he shall take nothing of his labor. He's not going to take his money, he's not going to take his cars, he's not going to take his position. Which he may carry away in his hand. So he, the, the person has no nothing to give to his son. And now, you know, life in general, when he dies, he's not going to take nothing with him. Now, this is not church age. 
This is the now. This is not the knowledge of the holy that we have today, on this side of Calvary. Because if I, as a born again Bible believing Christian, saved under the blood of Jesus Christ, I can take with me labors after I die. And the labors are in the form of gold, silver, and precious stones and lost souls. I'm not going to take the money I've done. I'm not going to take the cars I've gotten. I'm not going to take the homes I've been in. I'm not going to take any materialism. But of myself who tries to be a gospel witness and try to reach lost people, and I have two aspects of my Christianity. Number one, I want to tell the lost about Jesus Christ. And number two, I want to grow Christians. Anybody, as my planting and watering and God gives increase, anybody who got saved or gets saved, that's credited to me and that carries more into the eternal life. That person that got saved because of a work that I've done, whatever it be, that person is going to be pleased that we're walking the street of New Jerusalem. Solomon don't know that. Everything done for Jesus Christ is going to be gold, silver, and precious stone. Everything done for self would be wood, hair, and stubble is going to burn up. So for the Christian, we can carry over our works, because our works prove our faith, James says, into the eternal life. But our physical bank account, our physical garage, our physical closets, our physical storage centers, our, our physical beings of our material, we're not going to carry that over to glory. We're not like the pharaohs and bury everything with me. Mummify everything that was living and packed everything up in my tomb. That's not how it is. And Solomon, I don't know what point he writes this, but he marries the daughter of Pharaoh. And he's learned that, you know, her grandparents and her fathers and all that, you know, they bury everything in the tombs and it stays in the tomb. As the pharaohs will go off to the, 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 the new... Uh, the new heavens or hell, the lake of fire. And this was well, this also is a sore evil. That in all points, as he came, so shall he go, verse 15. And what profit has he what has labored for the wind? For the wind. Okay, everything he's done is for the wind, nothing. Not for the born-again Bible-believing Christian. And even still, let, let's look at Solomon's time. His, David has died. Ezekiel tells us that David the prince. What did Gabriel tell Mary about her son Jesus? He's going to sit on the throne of David. Well, evidently, there is something carried over into the millennium. The throne of David. The tabernacle, the temple, is there in Ezekiel time, in the millennium. So there are some things, even in the Old Testament, that are carried over. But what Solomon's writing about, he's not writing about the holy, he's writing about the worldly. Anything that's cash, check, credit, or, or money order, that doesn't go with you when you die. It's funny because I, I, in my time, I've heard about rich people who died and they were buried in their car. And that car is still in the graveyard today. And that soul is going off eternity. Uh, one of my wives, my first wife that died, when he got the casket, it was, there was a little box there they could lock. And you could put money, whatever you want. You could put whatever values are in that little box. I didn't put nothing. And they locked it and sealed it. And it can do no good to put it in a casket with a dead body. It ain't going with her. 
she's in glory with the Lord Jesus Christ. And anybody she she won to Jesus Christ of planting and watering and all the work that she done for missionaries that she knew and all the work she did of witnessing for that's gonna go with her. Um I kept her rings for sentimental. I believe we put a picture of the children, the family, and that's it. I could have stuffed that, that that coffin with everything. And 200 billion could do in years if the Lord tarries and dig it up, it'll be stewing that, that coffin. Look at the pharaohs. All their junk is in different museums all over the world. Look at the Titanic. All the junk they bring up is in museums all the way. Ain't doing the people no good that died. They don't even know where Captain Smith's body is. But they know where his bathtub is. Big deal. So when we look at the book of Ecclesiastes, we have to look. It is a worldly earthly not heavenly intended you can't go in here and really establish doctrine especially for the church as i said I, I am very lenient to use the word but solomon in this book is a godly philosopher i'm being very careful about using the word philosopher But Solomon comes down to the plain truths of living in this world. No afterlife. Though there is an afterlife. Heaven or hell. And right now for Solomon's time, Abraham's bosom. He doesn't write about any of that. He's writing about a man that's walking and talking. Breathing and... Because we're going to see some things coming up, especially in this chapter. Woohoo, let's go for the gusto. Let's do it. All right, yeah, but we're supposed to go in all the world and preach the gospel. We're supposed to study our Bible. In all his days, also he eateth in darkness. I don't know what the darkness is that John chapter 3. Wickedness. In sin, he has much sorrow. That goes all the way back to Genesis 3. That's what God told Adam and Eve in sorrow, in sorrow, in sorrow, in sorrow. That's the consequences, the evil of sin. Disobeying God. And wrath. Wrath of man and wrath of God. Today, the Bible says, he that has not the Son shall not see life but the wrath of God but Solomon ain't looking at hell Solomon's looking there are some people you know what they get they're, they're in sorrow much sorrow there are some people who are suffering under the wrath not of God of another man or woman and with his sickness, an ailment, a, a, a medical condition. And in other words, in sorrow and wrath, but here's a guy that's sick. And life says, I don't care. I don't want to hear it. I don't want your excuses. Behold, that which I have seen out of Solomon's eyes, I witness. It is good and calmly for one to eat and to drink and enjoy the good of his labor that he taketh under the sun all the days of his life. Solomon says, you know what? Live life to be happy. Work, labor, eat and drink. And do it to an enjoyment. Paul says, in everything give thanks to the Lord. Rejoice evermore. Go for the Christian, serve the Lord, do right, study the Bible. Enjoy what God's giving you. You may not have steak, you may not have seafood, but enjoy what God's giving you. 
which God giveth him. For it is his portion. God gives you to eat and to drink. Enjoy it. Behind me, I've said it often, there's a hospital behind me. There are many people in that hospital that can't eat. They're, they're on IV bottles, IV liquids. They have a tube in their stomach and they're fed by that tube. They don't taste what goes in their stomach and the nourishment. Thank God you can eat. Now the world will say eat, drink, and be merry. It's not what Solomon's saying. He said you work, you earn your money, you bought your food, you bought your drink, enjoy it. Paul says to the point, I forget, but, uh, to be content. That's what Solomon's saying. Be content, be happy. If you only, if the only thing you got is a can of green beans, that's what you got. Open a can of green beans and enjoy it. Behold, that which I have seen, it is good and comely for one to eat and to drink. Enjoy the good of all his labor, work, that he taketh under the sun all the days of his life before he die, which God giveth for his portion. Every man also to whom God has given riches and wealth, God giveth riches and wealth. There are men and women out there who've got riches and wealth and they never worked a day of their life. It was inherited to them. God gave it to them. There are men who played the lottery and God gave it to them. Now sometimes those riches and wealth destroy. Well, did God? Yeah, because that's what they wanted and God somewhere along the line said, hey, you don't want that. But they, that's what they want. You know what the hard thing about God is? God will give you what you want. Well, why are there so many false religions out there if God wants you to believe on you? Because God will give you what you want. God sent one of the kings of, of Israel. He says he sent a lying spirit. Why do you say God sent a lying spirit? Because that's what he wanted. He wanted his false prophets. He had 400 false prophets and the one prophet that did right and did, oh, well, he speaks evil. I hate him. Okay, well, I'll give you 400 false ones and you die in battle. Has given him power to eat thereof. There are some people that don't have that power. Like I said, either IV, stomach, I forget what that was called, where they pump it through your stomach, or there is somebody, that their stomachs, they got stomach ulcers, they got nervous problems. And they got a very limited diet. I mean, you just want to just go out in the backyard with somebody and just eat grass. They can't handle sugars, they can't handle hot, spicy food. Now, I don't like hot, spicy food, but I will, you know, every once in a while, I will touch it up with, with, with a little degree of hotness. There are some people, my grandmother used to work at a convalescent home in Connecticut, and she was, she was the head, not chef, but she was the head cook. And she had some food that you had to Perrier. And what's Perrier? It's liquid. It's food but you got to blend it so it's liquid so they can drink it and there is so so bad food if i can say it i don't know if they they use this word today and like i said I, work, I was with my grandma and all everyone that worked with her the comment you would say it was bland <laughs> bland it had no sugar it had no salt it had no pepper it was you ever had just a dry piece of chicken and that was it i don't know how you cook it but you can't add nothing that's blah put me some grape no can't have gravy put some salt no you got high blood pressure well put some pepper uh, no your stomach can't handle it let me get some butter no it's not good for your cholesterol this dry piece of, and then i gotta chop it up in small little pieces I had a grandmother that was in a nursing home. 
and they deliver her food. And my wife, when we come visit, would have to chop up her food very finely because she couldn't eat it. They had good food. But no one chopped it up for her. The worst thing that Solomon's saying, one of the things, and I can relate this with, with, with family members of my life. You got the riches, but you can't eat. I remember my, my second wife, when she was in the hospital, and she hated hospital food. So finally, when I talked to the doctor, he's like, well, we've got to get something in her. Like, yeah, you ain't going to get nothing with, with, uh, with this hospital food. I just, I mean, you got to get her KFC or something. He's like, do it. I'm like, what? <laughs> What she want? A chicken sandwich. Well, get her a chicken sandwich. You telling me to go to KFC and bring some food in the hospital? Yeah. You tell the nurses and I'll do it. And we did. We brought my wife a chicken sandwich, which she loves at KFC. We got her her mashed potato. She loved the KFC mashed potato. And you know what I found out later? She never ate it. I don't know what happened to the mashed potatoes, but when I was going through the hospital stuff and taking things out, there was this thing wrapped up and I opened it up, it was that chicken sandwich. I believe from that point in time, I may be wrong, but from the time that she went to hospice and then she died, she had no food. And then when she did was living, many years she had to watch what she ate because she had pancreatitis. You know, I don't like steak, but I'm going to use steak because I've heard it as an illustration. Oh, I want steak and potatoes. There are people who can afford the best steak. I don't know what the best steak is. Me, pork. But whatever the best steak is, I don't know. The best steakhouse. I don't know. I don't know anything about steak. There are people who are, there are people who can afford. The cow. And take this cow and slaughter this cow and give me the best part of this meat. They can't eat it. But they got the money for it. They got the money that they could spread out a whole feast for all their family at a steak restaurant. And the best drinks and the best steak and their family and the best tip. Problem, they can't eat. The power to eat thereof. It is God that gives you the power to eat. And to take his portion. And to rejoice in his labor. Many of us, 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 me too, we don't rejoice. And I'm looking for a job and I prayed and I said, Lord, you know what's going to happen? You're going to give me a job. And I'm going to get a point in that job. I'm going to gripe and complain about this day. That put that that assignment or whatever that part I'm going to complain about. And Lord, I already I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. Look what it says. This is the gift of God. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Look at that gift. Look at it. Go back to verse 19 again. Look at the gift of God. Every man also of whom God has given riches and wealth and has given him power to eat thereof and take his portion and rejoice in his labor. This is a gift of God. What about Donald Trump? That man is rich. That man has got luxury. That man has the power to eat his meal. That man's got the highest job in this country. God's given Donald Trump the ability, all that. Does he rejoice being the President of the United States? Or is his 
position as the president. Is there an alternative motive that he gripes and complains about? I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know his life. Does he give the glory and honor to God? I don't. I, I, I do believe he does not. Bible says, Paul says, rejoice evermore and everything give thanks to God. If you don't, and all the blessings and gifts and, and the portion that God gives you, if you don't thank God, you've sinned against God, you're going to be held accountable, saved or lost. That goes with any rich man. I don't know. I don't, I don't go, Donald Trump is one of the ones I know. Uh, I don't know his name, the, the one there for for Facebook. And then Bill Gates. Those are the names I hear. Same thing. I'm not going political and I'm not going whatever you want. I don't even know what fields these men are. I'm just saying, if God's given them the money, the wealth, and the power to eat and all that, and they don't thank God and they don't rejoice in God in it, ooh, they've sinned. Christian. If you don't thank the Lord and you don't rejoice in the Lord, who you sin? But look at that gift of God. Jesus Christ, eternal life is a gift of God. Look at that gift of God. Work, work, work. And America rewards people who don't work with money. For he shall not much remember the days of his life. Today, there's a disease called Alzheimer's, and people just forget. There's MS, where people just begin to forget. Here is a man that is laborious and able. Now, when we get to chapter 6, verse 2, we'll have a rich man, and he's unable. And we have the middle portion of God's gift of eternal life, Jesus Christ. Listen, though they don't know about Jesus, Solomon doesn't know anything about Jesus. Solomon don't know about the crucifixion. Solomon does not see Calvary. When Jesus Christ died, the ground opened up and the saints, the Old Testament saints came out. And they walked around Jerusalem 40 days until Jesus went up. Jesus set them free. Because God answered him in the joy of his heart. Solomon's rich. You know what Jesus said about the rich? It's, it's easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than to enter the kingdom of heaven. And they change that verse around so they can influence rich people to love and give them money. James, the entire book of James, writes against evil people, as uh, 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 the, the riches of evil people, because you're looking at the tribulation period. With, you, know, you know what it means to be rich in the tribulation period? You've got the mark. You know what it means to be poor in the tribulation period? You don't have the mark. There is no middle class. We're coming to, uh, I, I see him today, you know, we're reaching socialism in America. That's what this election did. Socialism's here. Well, amen. All oh, the preachers for so No, I'm not for socialism. I'm for Jesus Christ. But the, the Antichrist is going to be the socialism. So we're getting more and more closer to the Antichrist. One day, the middle class people are going to be wiped off the earth. And they're going to be wiped off the earth to the fact is you receive the mark and be rich and do business and buy things. Or you don't get the mark and you're, you're disgraced and you're not going to be able to do anything. You're not going to have any business. You're not going to buy or sell. Even the Apostle Paul wrote to Timothy about saved Christians say the love of money is the root of all evil. That's written to Christians. 
This is Second Timothy. And they always get that one verse wrong. I think. Paul is writing to Timothy about Christians. Second Timothy or the first Timothy? That was his farewell. Uh, first Timothy 6, verse 8, the verse I said. And having food and raiment, let us, let, uh, let us be there with content. Food, is that what Solomon said? Paul says, you know, be clothed. Solomon said, you're going to come in this world and go out this world naked. Paul said, well, in between dying, put some clothes on. But you got to pay attention to butts in the Bible because butts are a big context after the butt. There are good butts in the Bible and there are bad butts in the Bible. You need to mark the butts. They, writing to a Christian who's a minister of other Christians. Timothy is an evangelist and preacher. They that will be rich, their desire is to be rich. They want to be rich. Not that God has given them riches and wealth, they want. Fall into temptation. Now, who wants to go into temptation? But those that be rich are going to fall into temptation and a snare. That's a trap. Think of a bear trap. Think about a man who's going to walk into a bear trap purposely. And into many foolish, that's a, that's a Solomon word, and hurtful, did we just not read about the word hurt? I did not plan on looking at 1 Timothy 6. The Lord said, go there. Well, look what we're doing. I did not plan 1 Timothy 6 tonight. Hurtful lust. You know what, you know what Paul says in, in Romans chapter 7 about lust? It's also coveting and coveting's lust. So don't this thing, oh, I want to look at dirty pictures, or I want to sleep with all the women. And it's coveting. Got to have that big, fancy, expensive car. I've got to have the phone with all the gadgets. I can't believe people pay over $1,000 for a phone. How about this? I can't believe that people today pay eight bucks for a bag of popcorn or ten bucks for a big bag of popcorn. Really? <coughs> Go down to Walmart and you can get a, a, a tin you can keep. My daughter got one with the, with the dogs. For five bucks, it has three different flavors of popcorn in it. And you get a tin. You pay eight bucks or ten bucks. This message is, is by me. And all you get is a plastic bag that's going to end out in the ocean. And some whale's going to eat the plastic bag. And then he's going to die of your popcorn bag. Oh. You buy eight. I mean, it's, it's not even a big bag. You buy an $8, $10 bag of popcorn, you're stupid. It's gonna get you. It's gonna get you thirsty, and you're gonna buy. I don't can imagine what they sell water down there at. But I'll move on. Where was that? All right, foolish and hurtful lust, which drown men in destruction and perdition. Perdition, drowning in death. They find that people who won the lotteries and the casinos and they check on them later, they're in bankruptcy because they weren't content. It amazes me, and again, uh, this is not political, but I have read the statements from 
past presidents about the presidency. And the office of the president by the past presidents is, uh, I'd never do that again. It's horrible life. It's a miserable life. And then you get these men who go for a second term. Move on. That prediction is destruction. The son of prediction. For, now let's get this verse right. The love of money, not the money. The love of money is the root of all evil. If a Christian loves money, he's involved in evil. Didn't we just read about that in Ecclesiastes? I didn't plan on coming to First Timothy. God did. Which while some coveted after, they lusted. Back to 9, verse 9. They have erred. Didn't Solomon say last night? Don't, about the vows, don't tell the angel I erred. I didn't plan on coming to this chapter. God did. From the faith. What's the faith? They're Bible believers. They loved God. They're saved. And their love for money drew them away from Jesus. That rich young ruler walked away from Jesus. People come to me, well, you're driving people away. You're, you're. Well, so did Jesus. And pierced, pierced holes themselves through many. Didn't we just see sorrows? I didn't play in verse six, chapter 6. But thou, O man of God, Timothy, flee these things. Flee what thing? Flee money. Just be content. Get out of the money. Don't get involved with money. It'll ruin you. Even if you're a Christian, 1 Timothy chapter 6 is written to a Christian minister to Christians, and you tell that congregation, don't you get involved with money. Now, if God gives it to you, Ecclesiastes chapter 5. All right. God sees you fit for it. Or he may see it for your destruction. I mean. That's Bible with Bible. <laughs>